conceptual perspective. Talk about Dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable uh, week as we approach uh, the end of the year. Uh, amidst holiday season for those of you who celebrate I wish you the best um, as you saw in the preemptive uh, content we are still in the midst of a fundraiser we have not hit our goals we are asking you if you believe in the work that we are doing here at the Odyssey Project if you believe in the research the program development, the program implementation, boots on the ground, all of the content that I've created, the books that I've written, all of that stuff comes at a cost and we'll continue to push forward. This year we're going into 2023 with plans to build housing, uh, to acquire housing for women for domestic abuse, uh, intimate partner violence, uh, mental health uh, for men and women and more. Uh, and we are moving forward. We are intent on being a force in our community for years to come. We are teaching our children uh, the importance of growing up and becoming strong, not to escape, but to lift and to show support and to, sh and to show love. And we are challenging you, as it says in the preemptives, we need your support. Look in the description box. Click the link and give. If you are per, uh, if you prefer Cash App, the organization's Cap Ash account handle is also in the description box. Um, I'm here now, and and I wrestled back and forth on where, whether I was going to record this or if I was going to go live. I decided not to go live because I wanted time to gather my thoughts and be precise and uh, really think this thing through. Um, and so doing this gives me time to be in my own space without worrying about having to be on point and speak, whatever, because I can, uh, you know, I can uh, edit out any empty space or whatever. But and then I might just run through it like I usually do. But, hey, I wanted the option. Um I'm sitting up and someone sends me a picture and it's of three little girls in negligees, uh, quote unquote lingerie attire, uh, teddies or whatever you want to call it. Um, and they are daughters of notable celebrities. Uh, one is a 12 year old girl who is the daughter of Game, the rapper. The other two are twins who happen to be the ch uh, children, the daughters of Diddy and Kim Porter. The twins are 16, Game's daughter is 12. And the theme for their sweet 16 is lingerie, negligee, whatever you want to call it, uh, which is by its very definition and nature and uh, omnibus suggestion about sex. Uh, there is some questionable things that have been going on and everybody's been discussing it about Diddy and who Diddy is dating right now. I've chosen to stay away from it. 
uh, primarily because at the time that this is going on, this person is above age, barely, but above age. And there's a pattern, and I'm looking at it and paying attention, but when I'm looking at his children, which should be his primary concern, especially with the fact that their mother is no longer alive, and they are, the daughters, I mean, you're supposed to be there and support and protect children, period. Uh, male and female, but as a man, your concern should be to protect your daughter at all costs, especially as minors. Now, when they get older and they get out there and they figure they know what they're doing and they got to figure it out on their own, your job is to be there with as much of a covering as possible because culture has changed. There was a time that a female stayed under her father's covering until another male came and took the responsibility of covering her. We're past that. You know, every time I talk about stuff like this, I, I'm out of touch with the time. I'm out of touch with this. And what people don't look at is I spent countless hours, years, studying history, studying the sociology and psychology of advancement, progression, and regression. And what I can tell you is some things aren't meant to be outgrown. There are certain principles that are eternal. There are certain things you just don't simply allow. It should never be a time where it's okay for an adult to be sexually pursuing a minor pedophilia, which is something that's being re pushed real big. Ephebophilia, which is being pushed real big. And for those that don't know the difference, pedophilia is sexual attraction to a prepubescent minor, someone who hasn't even started developing yet. And ephebophile or ephebophilia is the sexual attraction to a, an adolescent, not yet adult minor who has started or is beyond puberty and has started developing sexually. Uh, and both are sick, both ha are illnesses, both are um, something that should be off limits. It shouldn't be something that is pushed, but there is an entire sect that is made of people from uh, mm. extremely powerful and uh, uh, powerful groups who are literally pushing the right to be engaged with minors sexually. They are pushing right. They have literally openly challenged different state laws that prohibit pedophilia. They are presenting it as something natural. We could look at the the fall of Greece. We could look at the fall of Rome. And a lot of this was tied in the destruction, the disintegration of the family and the uh, pedophilia uh, type behavior played a role in all of this. It wasn't just that simple, but a lot of the mindset that has to go into supporting something like this to saying it's OK. But let me tell you something. The first step in condemnation isn't saying I'm okay with it. It's saying nothing. Silent condemnation is the first step into this dark cavern of being okay with stuff. We've done it over and over in social uh, social behavior uh, to things that 30 years ago were, un were unacceptable is absolutely acceptable now. And we don't know how we got here. And we will even fight to defend it now because we did not stand up. We did not speak out. We're talking about a 12 year old, two 16 year olds. And again, every time I start to bring this up and I've been talking about this for years, how they're slowly. And here's the, here's the problem. People don't get it. They are grooming not just those babies. They are grooming our babies. When you see the picture of Diddy's daughters, of Game's daughter doing this, guess what you want for your sweet 16? Guess what the natural assumptive suggestion of wearing something that, of that is? I'm sexy. And you'll even have moms telling their daughters at 14, 15, you're sexy. And not seeing the sexual connection to it and the opening of it. And now these pictures of these babies, they are babies, are out in the open for sick people to look at and share and promote 
and push. That's why I didn't share it. I didn't make it a thumbnail. I didn't share it on any social media page. I have not pushed it because that doesn't need to be. To me, as far as I'm concerned, it's mild child porn. Anything to me that is sexually suggestive on a child is child porn. Now, it might be, okay, their, their, their parts are covered, but it's sexually suggestive. It is in a vein of human thought that should not exist. We should not be thinking of our children in a sexual way. We shouldn't be thinking of anyone else's children in a sexual way. We should be thinking of them in the, in the, in the vein of their potential, in the vein of their possibilities, in the vein of this thing. We consistently say that they're our future. How can they be our future when we're exposing them to things that are potentially catastrophically destructive uh, from an emotional, psychological, spiritual, and physical perspective? I have, with all my daughters, had my share of Sweet Sixteens. Never has it been acceptable for the theme to be that of a matter of fact, you're going to be covered. You can dress nice, you can get cute, you can make up your face, you can celebrate your, you know, your transitioning into that next phase, but we're not doing anything that's sexual. I can tell you that the last one that did it, who just turned 18, but I remember a couple years ago when she turned 16, her mom took them and they, they did the whole night thing. They had their friends over, they celebrated. And the next day they went to the mall. And while they're walking around uh, the mall, their, their mom, her mom is, you know, sharing with me. She's taking pictures and she's saying, you know, they're so cute and everything. Now she had on a nice pair of leather pants, full, full length uh, leather pants, a nice black turtleneck her hair was done, her makeup was done, and she was wearing heels. And adult men were just gawking and flying. That's with her covered. Imagine what it would be like if she was wearing something provocative. Imagine if she's walking around in short shorts and, and whatever else and doing that. And, and, and who's responsible for saying what is acceptable for setting the standard, understanding that at some point they leave and they're going to set their own standards, but you want to have a benchmark. You want to have a baseline that even when they try to stretch it, they know what stretching it is. If you're saying it's okay at 16 to wear this, What's the benchmark of stretching it? Because they're going to get to a point where they're going to want to stretch it just for the purpose of their own personal liberation. If wearing something sexually suggestive at 12 is okay, what are you going to do at 20 when you're trying to stretch and get out of that? What room do you have to move out and express freedom without exposing yourself? And I don't just mean physically exposing yourself. I mean exposing yourself to harm, to danger, emotional uh, damage and so much that comes with that life if we're going to be honest with ourselves and most of us don't want to be honest with ourselves we want to sit up and say it didn't, it, it didn't bother me that much I, I, I'm good no if we're going to be honest with ourselves not only are a lot of us struggling and suffering because of childhood sexual abuse a lot of us are still trying to recover from wayward sexual engagement as adults Oh, we don't want to talk about soul ties. We don't want to talk about the spiritual nature of merging with someone in that way and the exchanging uh, on a physiological, scientific level of, of, of DNA. We don't want to talk about how that impacts the body, the spirit, the mind. We don't want to talk about that. But we are sitting up and le leaving our children to this type of thing. And my, pro my thing is, well, you know, those are celebrities. But what you don't understand is... Those celebrities have made pictures that are now public that your child is guaranteed to see. I guarantee if you go to Instagram now, you're going to find that picture. I didn't go looking for it. Somebody sent it to me. I deleted it. But what I can tell you is I don't want, I don't want to see my 21-year-old dress like that. I don't ever want to see my daughter dress like that, to be honest. But what I definitely don't want to do is be sitting up supporting something where she's dressing like that and it's not dressing like that for her husband. Oh, I know. I'm out of touch with time. Oh, marriage. Yeah, that, you know, marriage. 
This sexual liberation thing is destroying us and we don't even get it. We put the cart before the horse and we marvel at the results in a negative way. We are overwhelmed and flabbergasted at the results we're getting. We're looking at things and we're saying, what the hell is going on? Well, when you get out of line with certain things that are designed to create certain re results, you can't expect to get the same results. You can't expect to get the same results of a holistic nuclear family with a busted, broken family that doesn't have connectivity, that doesn't have relationship, that doesn't have family values, that doesn't have standards, that doesn't have a projected outcome for their children. You can't expect the same results. You are not going to get the same results. Historically speaking, unless this generation is just a generation that's magically going to do everything wrong and get everything right, we are in trouble. Now, I'm gonna close it on this note back to silent condemnation one of the biggest problems we've had with sexual childhood sexual abuse one of the biggest things we've had with uh the mishandling of our children as youth one of the reasons why i have been such a champion for black women is because uh on the liberal side up to 60 percent have reported being molested or sexually abused as a child the reason we're having this problem is because of silent condemnation, because I guarantee the person that was doing molested wasn't the only person that knew, wasn't the only adult that knew. I've got people who, I have clients who are literally in their 60s, a couple approaching 70, still haven't dealt with it yet because they didn't get the help when they that, that they needed when they needed it. And so they got a trail of nothing but terror and destruction behind them because there was nothing there and they were trying to fix it on their own and they were running over their own selves and everybody in their pathway and creating destruction because somebody didn't protect them when they were a child. Somebody didn't speak out. Somebody didn't say nothing. You know, they went, it, it, and there are times that uh, mother, wives and mothers have gone to, 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 to clergy and clergy have advised them not to report it to the police. Why? Because it would it would take him out of the home. It would take an income source out of the home. Yes, we need our men in the home, but we need men who are going to protect in the home. We need men who are going to provide and live strong in the home. We need men who women can lean into in the home. We need men who are going to say not on my watch in the home. What we don't need in the home is men who are the terrorists. Silent condemnation. If you knew it was happening and you didn't say anything, you're just as guilty. So if we know something and we're sinning and we don't speak out on it, we're just as guilty. That's why I sound my clarion every time I see something that's destructive and disruptive to the black community. Why? Because I become a part of the problem when I remain silent. I will not be silent. I will not silently condone this bull crap. You can call me out of touch with time. You can call me an old fogey. You can call me a bunch of things. But what I can tell you is there's a certain order to the universe designed by the most high. And when we fall out of line uh, with this design, we reap the whirlwind of its results. And we're seeing this in the destructive behavior in our communities. We're seeing this in the in the flooding of the prisons. We're seeing this in the school to prison pipeline. We're seeing this in the perpetuation of poverty. We're seeing this in the increase in physical illness. We're seeing this in the increase in mental illness where suicide attempts are at an all time high among black people because we are sitting idly by doing nothing. Shame on us. Look, that's it for me. I'm checking out, but I tell you what. Sitting around wishing for something to change isn't how you change it. We're either going to get involved, we're either going to get uh, become a part of the solution, or we are part of the problem. It, there is no in-between, there is no middle ground, there is no tr neutrality in this. you either for cha positive change or you are part of the problem, period. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I said at the beginning, if you believe in the work we're doing, show some love, show some support. Uh, give us what we need to fight this battle because we're fighting on so many fronts that you can't possibly understand it. On that note, look, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.
Thank you.